Hi there, my name's Sean, and let's talk about self-care. So first up, let's just breathe. In this fast-paced world, there is so much that bombards us every single day. We're frequently pulled in all sorts of different directions. And post-pandemic, we are seeing ourselves fitting into a new normal. We have an increased number of us now working from home, or a combination of work from home and work from the office. We also have an increase in our technology capabilities that allow us to be contactable in so many more ways than one. Furthermore, social media means that we're so much more engaged in so many other people's lives as well. From here, we see a lot of a merge between our work and our home lives. Our personal work lives start merging. And if we don't have good control over that, and uh, good barriers in our day to day, often we see that we do get this push and pull between work and personal life. It's just so easy, isn't it, to log on at nine o'clock at night to finish that one task that we've just remembered about, or answer that one email that we know that we need to get to. We find ourselves more on than off these days, and we find ourselves also leading to mental health stress fatigue, exhaustion, and ultimately potentially burnout. These sorts of things I'm sure that you've experienced or you have someone close to you who have experienced or talked about. This is a nightmare for those of us who enjoy our work or a bit of a workaholic, where we put deadlines on top of our stresses, and this means that we're working longer hours as well. While we are filling more and more things into our life each day. Self-care and fitness often are the first things that we go, get out of the way. We forget about these practices that can actually help us in these times of stress. Often we don't even realize that we're going down this downward spiral until it's too late. So let's take a moment to step back and just think about self-care. Let's put it into the spotlight now. So first we need to define what self-care is. What does it mean for you? Self-care is the deliberate action of promoting our own physical, mental and emotional well-being. These are identifying habits that actually enrich us, they fulfill us. So what is that to you? Is it nutrition? Do you enjoy going out with friends and having great food? Do you enjoy going off to the beach? and having some good time just watching the waves roll in? Is it exercise? Is it a good nap? A good book, maybe? Self-care is exactly this, and so much more. They are the actions and the activities that give us joy, that allow us to feel enriched and fulfill us. So why are these important? Well, it's simple. Take a moment to think about those self-care actions. Those activities that fulfill you, how does it make you feel? If you're someone that puts yourself last, you're always looking out for family, friends or peers, or even clients, often physical, uh, sorry, just your self-care takes a hit. Now this means that we are always on and we're not focusing on rejuvenating our body and our minds. Self-care is important for our physical and mental health. For our physical health, without good self-care, we can experience physical health problems. It's been shown that without self-care practices and rest, this can lead to chronic disease and illness, sleep disorders, and even gain weight, ultimately leading to a decrease in quality of life. This is due to often our stress, our stress response and the hormone cortisol. It also leads to sleep issues, so disrupted sleep or disrupted sleep patterns. Now the good thing is, in the fitness industry, that physical activity can actually help reduce those stress responses, sorry, reduce the, um, the hormones of cortisol and also help us respond to those stress responses better. This is where we need to be kind. Physical activity doesn't need to always be high intensity to help us overcome that stress. 
There'll be days where you just don't feel like it. But that's all good. Physical activity takes a whole lot of different forms, and this can be utilized in yoga practices, meditation, or even lower intensity exercise. Like I said, exercise can help reduce that stress response, but also allow us to manage stress so much more. In the Journal of Health Psychology, exercise was effective in lowering cortisol levels and improving stress response in participants that were experiencing chronic stress. In a 12-week study, participants were put through 30-minute sessions of moderate intensity five days a week. Now, when we compare them to a control group who did the same thing, were experiencing chronic stress but weren't doing exercise, there was a significant reduction in cortisol levels and improvements in stress responses in our exercising participants. Now, exercise can also help with our mental health, but also self-care practices are important for our mental health too. Have you ever taken a moment to step back and just listen to how the body is feeling? Listen to the way that we're talking to ourselves. Self-care allows us to create balance and stability. It also lowers the response to our fight or flight. So when we do get stressed, we often are in this heightened state of emotion. And when we stress, we don't always think clearly. Self-care allows us to manage us when we get to those responses too. It also, long-term, will help us reduce the risk of mental health conditions and even potentially mental illness. So things like chronic stress and anxiety can be fought before it even gets to that point. It allows us to cope better, creating coping mechanisms in our day-to-day -day and improve self-esteem, giving us a more positive outlook on life. So sometimes less is more. Don't think that you need to exercise more to overcome stress. Self-care is where we need to focus. Yes, exercise can be a part of that, but is it taking yourself off to the beach? Is it sitting down with a good book and just letting the world roll over you? Is it a time to put your technology away? Meditate, yoga. Sleep is also a crucial component of this. It is important for recovery and training and also mental health. Sleep helps us allow, sorry, lowers cortisol levels during that sleep process. It helps our bodies repair and regenerate. It helps our bodies and our brains consolidate memories from our previous day and also the learning practices. Getting enough sleep is super important because it improves our cognitive function, our thinking process, boosts immune systems, and reduces chronic disease risk too. So further benefits can be read further in this article. So look at the ways that we can prioritize our self-care and even potentially promote our clients' self-care too in their day-to-day. -day. Read on for further tips in this space and how to create good self-care practices and rest practices within your life.